Okay, single legs. So I point the guy's head, move me. Boom, I go double leg. I lost, corn, hook. Take the guy. He gets back up. Okay, I'm here. Moving this guy. Boom. Try to get guard. One more time. There you go. All right, we're going, we're live. Teach me grappling. Brian Peterson, I'm back. I've got knee bar mic right here, Mike Jeffrey. Uh, we're gonna show you guys uh, some finishing, finishing stuff. So when you get sprawled on, how to finish, okay? This is like a huge series, so stay tuned. When I, when I go through this series, there's lots of moves I could show you. Um, this almost never ends, and I could show you variation after variation, but today I'm just gonna try to give you something bite-sized that you can swallow today and get it working for you. I don't wanna go too detailed because it'll get really complicated. I wanna to try to keep it simple in the beginning, and then on future videos, I might get into more and more detail. So, um, when you shoot for a takedown and the guy sprawls on you, don't turtle. I went over a video like that. So, if I shoot for a takedown, he sprawls. If I go down like this, and I start like worrying about my neck, because he grabs my neck like a guillotine, let's say, and you do this on your elbows, it's not good. Because what happens is, he'll start to spin and take my back, okay? As he takes my back, you know, now you have to try to roll back to your guard. So, I don't, I don't wanna do that, okay? So, what I wanna do is, I wanna shoot, the guy sprawls, if I lose control, like where I cannot lock, say he sprawls a little bit more, I wanna stay up here on my hands. I don't wanna give up, okay? Not yet, okay? And a lot of people ask the question, like what if he does a guillotine, or what if he does a Dars or an Anaconda or all these moves? So first, let me address those issues. Okay, let's say that he's gonna go guillotine. Okay, so if he goes guillotine, first thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shrug my shoulders a little bit. Okay, I'm still gonna grab his leg. Now, if he goes for guillotine, go ahead, pull guard. I wanna cartwheel over his body and get to the side control and that way, he doesn't have the finish. I'll be able to, you know, pass the guard. I'll be able to get out of this. A little bit of shoulder pressure, driving pressure into his rib cage, into his chest, and I'll eventually get out of there. And he'll waste energy with the guillotine. So I'm not too worried. Now, of course, sometimes there's guys that can really cinch and catch your neck, okay? And, and, but you wanna have the skill of jumping over. So one more time, if I go here and he goes guillotine, see how I have his leg? Go guillotine, jump. I want to be able to jump over, okay? Once I can jump over clean, I'll be good. Okay, right here he can squeeze all he wants, shove his legs, drive pressure, shoulder pressure, wear the guy out, limp arm, get that arm out, get to his neck. If he has just my neck, I can go for the Von Flu choke and then uh, finish him with that, okay? All right, um, what about the Dars? Let me show you guys this. If I shoot and he sprawls, and if I'm down here on my elbow, see how I'm on my elbow grabbing for his leg? He could sacrifice Dars and roll over to his left side. As he falls, he shoots the Dars and he chokes me, okay? And you tap. That happens a lot because you guys are on your elbow, okay? Being on your elbow is the perfect scenario for him to, to fall over and insert the Dars. You see that? So, by me being up on my hands, watch what happens. I go for the legs, look at my structure. My head is up into his chest. I'm trying to attack him, he's sprawling. He feels that there's an opening. He wants to 
Commit to the darts, go. I bring this hand over to the other side. I stay up like this. If he's really good with a back bridge, he can like cinch it, go. You see, but I still have time if I'm strong to do this. Now, if he can pull me down and make me fall, now I'm in a little bit of trouble. And now I'm gonna have to employ the other defenses. You know, opening up here, keeping the space nice and open instead of being here and get choked, okay? So another reason why being up on your hands will help you per, uh, prevent that sacrifice stars. When you guys fall up, you're actually not protecting yourself as much as you might think. Again, I, I give you the, the real reason I, I teach this is because in a real fight, you guys are gonna deal with strikes. Now, some people said um, to on my last video that I talked about this, was he could strike me more if I'm on my hands. And guys, it's, I, I, I find that not true in my opinion. There is always possibilities, okay? If I'm here, let's think about strikes. If he needs my head right now, see how that is? If he gets far enough back, he can need my head. You see? Now look, what's better for him? If I'm here, protecting my neck, how do the knees, you know, how do the knees go now? Imagine, how hard is that shot gonna be? What if I'm here, Mike? Knee. Okay. When he's trying to knee you, that's the time you need to attack. Okay, that's the time you need to attack. There's a big difference. Okay, what about strikes with like punches? Um, like if I'm here and I'm protecting my neck, I might be able to block some punches but it doesn't get you out of the situation. If I'm here, my face is open a little bit, for sure. But again, if he throws one punch and I start to drive, he's now like losing his balance. If he continues to throw punches and I push and I get up to here, his punches aren't gonna be as effective. Okay, um, in a real fight, you're gonna get punched. So if you guys didn't know that, you're gonna get hit. You have to weather that storm and you gotta work through that. Okay, that's what jujitsu is about. So when you guys get in the real fights, it's not always picture perfect. Sometimes it is. But other times you might take a few shots to get on top. Again, on the street, a lot of these guys don't know martial arts. So if you got into a situation where you're in a flurry, some guy swung at you, you grabbed him, somehow he knew how to sprawl and you got, fell down to your knees. I don't want you guys to go to your training and you know, go like this. Oh, this is what I do in training. I protect my collars so people, so people don't choke me. This is just not good. Don't do this, okay? Are you getting the whole picture? Yeah. Okay, so I don't, I don't wanna be like that. I wanna be, you know, if I fall down in the situation, I'm grabbing, I'm trying to lock a single leg. My head is up, I'm trying to drive. I'm trying to come up to my feet, okay? There's already a video I have on finishing single legs. Now let me talk about the horn drill again. So I get here and he sprawls beyond my grip. Sprawl, boom, my hands go here. And he tries to run behind me. I put my arm up. Now look, look where I am. Toes dug in, he sprawls, sprawl. yeah. I have his leg, I'm just gonna make one movement, and watch this. Lift this knee up, slide, slide this leg here, step over and hook. Okay, once you guys hook, watch my pivot. I put all the weight on my right knee, and I pivot and push my left knee up. Now come on over here, Eddie. See, this one's up, this one's down. This one, I have hooked around his leg, okay? now. You got a good look at the picture. You, you look like it might be a little close. You need to probably get over here. Okay. Now, this hand is here around his leg. And this one, I have balance. This is called the wizard. If he's wizarding me down, like pull forward. Yeah, like that. It's, it, it becomes like a battle right here. Look at my stance and my position. Okay. Now, one thing I can do is I can try to pull his ankle in this direction, which affects his knee. Okay, like this. As I do that, I'm like, he, he makes him want to take his wizard out 
because he might fall backward if you keep your wizard. See, like he might fall backward to his butt and then I can get on top, okay? But there's, there's so many moves. Again, I'm just kind of going on a fly right here. I'm gonna give you guys what I, uh, some basic stuff to think about. If this shoulder is being wizard and your shoulders popped out, you're out of position, okay? Um, you're out of position right now. You want this shoulder to be behind the guy's leg, like this, okay? I want my shoulder behind his hamstring, his butt. So when he wizards, wizard, like he can't, like get that leg up, try to wizard. Yeah, it's really hard for him, we're in a battle. Now what happens is I can grab this leg and pull it up to the shelf. The shelf is here, up on top, then I can change off and go for two and take him down. At this point, a jujitsu guy is definitely gonna pull guard at this point. Most of them will pull guard even earlier. But if he tries to sit to his guard, you're now in a leg drag. This leg is on this side. I will smash his legs, keeping his leg on this side, and then I'll maneuver towards side control this way. Okay, so let's show you guys that. This concept is called stepping in the hole. Okay, stepping in the hole. So again, I, I'm here, maybe I have a head tap, take the shot, I, he sprawls. I still got his leg, he sprawls and gets away. Boom, when the guy's here, stay strong. Okay, he spins to go to my back, more enough. He got caught by my hand on the leg. He tries to sprawl away, I'm holding the leg. I maneuver my knee close, look. This one goes up, hook, drop the knee, and bring this leg up. I'm driving, I'm leaning in, try to push pressure back to me. See, I'm controlling this leg. I lift the leg on top of the shelf, change off, and now you see he ba abandoned the wizard. I may go to his waist and I might run towards his back. I don't know if he, he's gonna pull guard or not. He may, he may do that and I'm gonna try to pass his guard. Notice I'm in that leg drag so I can pass to my right. Or if he was up on his knees and the guy tries to stand up, you can move here and then get to your seatbelt and start putting your hooks in, okay? So. This is becoming a very long video. So I'm gonna try to short, uh, wrap this thing up. Again, this position has so many different finishes. So this idea of called stepping in the hole in wrestling, stepping in the hole, it basically means hooking the guy's leg, hooking the outside of his leg with your leg. But when you have a single leg, okay? So maybe I start with a double leg and I lost it. I still have the leg or I lose it and I use the horn drill. Maybe I'm going horn drill back and forth. He goes the other way. He goes the other way. I get his leg, I step over and hook it. Look at how I switch my stance. I go from here, sprawl again, sprawl out front. Yes, I move, hook, and drop. Once I'm here, if I can attack this leg, I will. If it's close, if it's not, I'll pull the leg up on top of the shelf. If it's still far, if he's very flexible, I know it's hard, try to stand up and get a wizard. Yeah, if it's still far, I'll stand up and I'll run towards the back, taking him down. Moving towards side control right here and getting control and position, okay? All right, if you find yourself getting too close on the angles, yeah. just stay back, yeah. it's okay. All right, so here it is a little quick, okay, single legs. So I point the guy's head, moving. I can double it. I lost. Horn. Hook. Take the guy. He gets back up. Okay. I'm here. Moving this guy. Boom. Try to get guard. One more time. Okay. You gave it to me. Don't give it to me. One more time. You don't have to give it to me. If I have your leg, you get away. Yeah.
There you go. Thank you guys so much. Please click like, subscribe, share it. Put it on Facebook, put it on Instagram, social media. Tell everybody about Teach Me Grappling. If you guys click that link down below at Patreon or PayPal, you can donate to this channel and I'll continue to bring you guys this stuff. Thank you so much. It's a new year. Got more stuff for you. Thank you. I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you, Mike. Yeah. Welcome back. Eddie, he's back. He's back. New gym floor. We still got work to do. Check it out right here. Look at how nice and beautiful. Jim's looking good. See you guys later. Take it easy. Have a good night.